Okay, looks like we're live. Um, let's see. So the client uh, did have the backplate for the for the system we were building earlier. So this is part two of uh, of that computer rebuild. Um, so yeah, AMD stock backplate. Let's go ahead and get it installed. So there's the motherboard. So it comes through the back of the case. Just like that. And then we can screw in these uh, standoffs. There's a coarse side and a, and a fine side to, uh, to the standoffs. The coarse side goes into the back plate. Hey, Chip. <laughs> yeah, I got it. He had one. I went ahead and ordered another one, though, because this is the second time I've needed one in, like, a week. So chances are I'll need another one. So that's one I'll just be uh, be keeping. And then whenever I use it, I'll order another one. Okay, so that's, that's in there. The next step is putting the cooler uh, at the top of the case and um, also adding fans. But I need to take off this dust filter. So yeah, the cooler is going to go up here. I went ahead and put back on the Intel um, mounting mechanism because it allowed me to also put this cover on to keep from messing up the thermal compound. Even if it does get messed up, we can put on fresh thermal com compound. It's not that big of a deal. So the idea behind this is you mount the fans to the bottom of the cooler and then it's a matter of getting it up here and screwing it into the top. But let's go ahead and get fans mounted to it. Okay, so turning it upside down, the this is the, the towards the back of the case. And that's where we want to put the fan cables, kind of like that, so that they can go to the back of the, uh, like behind the motherboard, and then come back through if needed, or probably, yeah, maybe needed. I haven't looked that much at the, um, uh, what's it called, the fan hub. Okay, but we do need to get the uh, the direction right. We want air to blow through the cooler. Let's see. Do we have indication of direction? On the fan? Oh, come on. Uh, I'm not seeing any indication of direction of airflow. Ah, oh, that sucks. Okay, well, the other way to tell is it's going to spin this way, I think. Yes, so it's going to push air. Kind of look at the, the convex versus conve concave, so that should be correct to blow air through, which will come out the top of the case because right now this is upside down. Okay. Screws. Lots of screws. Let's see. It goes through like that. And in. Probably don't need... No, nah, we wouldn't... Uh, we wouldn't need the um, the washers for this. 
the washers are going to go on the other side when we actually screw this into the top of the case. Logo is outside. Someone says logo is outside. I know there's a logo right there. Is there one on the other side? Oh, you mean logo is is outside of the uh, for the fans. So the direction of airflow is this way. Pretty sure. How much does it usually cost to ask someone to build a PC? I charge 140 to do this. Although I should probably tell people I'll charge more if they have coolers like this, because this is a massive pain in the ass. Let's see if we can get these to go in. Yeah, we can power those in. Uh, BIOS update, yes. Overclocking, not so much. I used to overclock things, um, overclock CPUs. You know, I'll set the uh, the RAM to be clocked the way it's supposed to be with the uh, the DOCP or the XMP, whatever they call it in the motherboard. But as far as like <sighs> overclocking processors has gotten to the point where they're already so you know tuned well that you don't get much benefit from overclocking. Do you give retired men discounts? Um, no, um, not for people who are retired. I, I don't usually give discounts. Um, occasionally, you know, you know, I know people for a long time. I, I know that some people are on you know fixed incomes and they really don't have much money, but they still need their computer to work. And yeah, in those cases, sure. But um, just as a general rule, no, I don't. Uh, I don't give discounts. And I think I just realized I screwed up. It feels like I screwed up on the on the fan direction. Because it's going to go like this. Yeah, I got the fans backwards. Backwards is in the, um, the, uh, the wiring. Should have put it on the other side. Because it's all upside down right now. Upside down and backwards. pre-built or buy the parts then pay someone to build it for me you should build it yourself you can build a computer anyone can build a computer watch enough of these videos and then just go for it usually works out fine and then if it gets to the point where you just can't get it to work you know then maybe pay somebody um i i get a lot of people who are like that who who try to build things themselves and they they just can't figure it out or they get nervous so they call me and i finish putting it together for them uh this guy here um he disassembled his old computer um and was about to put it into a new case and then realized he wasn't confident enough to do it so then he brought it to me and you really shouldn't worry about making mistakes i mean you, you all watch me on here i make mistakes all the time it's not that big of a deal you make a mistake you fix it and you you move on. Like this right here, I might be making a mistake again and not even realize it. But that's all right. 
when I realize the mistake I made, I'll fix it and move on. It's fine. Uh, eight core instead of for 30 bucks more. I, I'm not sure what uh, what you're saying there. Um, Imposanter, um, Mr. <laughs> How long you build PCs? I've been building PCs, um, oh, probably 25 years now. Whatever 96, 97 comes out to. You know, 1996, 1997. Why Ryzen 4000 instead of 8000? Ryzen 4000 are um, mobile chips. Ryzen 6000 are probably going to be mobile chips, and then the next Ryzen desktop CPUs will be Ryzen 7000. And those are supposedly coming out by the end of the year. Uh, so you're 17, be building it for yourself. Maybe I don't know something. I, I mean, I don't know things, and you know, you, you realize you don't know things, you do some research, you figure it out, and then you know it. Right? I mean, that's how everything works. <laughs> I wish says do the Spock hand. Um, let's see. Hadn't done that in a while. There you go. The Spock hand. How could you tell I'm a Star Trek fan? Okay. Making sure they're all going in. Just tighten down. And you don't want to over tighten these. Uh, this, this powered screwdriver is set to its lowest torque. So when it gets to the bottom, you can hear that ant sound. That's it stopping putting extra torque on the screw if, because these fans are um, are plastic and they will start bending if you keep screwing them down. Okay, so somehow I ended up with this one still backwards. See what I mean about making mistakes? It's okay. Cables to be this way. How are we doing there? You can get a eight core one generation regeneration newer with more power for almost the same money. Then get the newer version. Um, if if you're only saving you know a tiny bit of money getting an older version of a processor, spend the extra ten or fifteen bucks or whatever it is and get the new one. Um, even if it runs at the same gigahertz as the the previous generation, the um, the speed on it will be so much faster. Well, not speed, but you know, like performance, because each each uh, generation of processor they uh, they improve uh, the efficiency. Okay, so this looks to be correct. This will be going on the the top of the uh, of the case. And for that, let me go ahead and get the screws. So it's it's these little guys, and we'll go ahead and pre-do the uh, the washers. Okay, there's four. Let's see, how many do I need? It's probably 12. 
One, two, yeah, it's three, fours. Don't, I mean, you don't really have to put all the screws in, but I'm going to anyway. So that's four. Yeah, I mean, you could get away with, with four screws just at the corners and be fine, but yeah. do it right. Phillips screwdriver enough for all. Yeah, a Phillips screwdriver is, is what you need for just about everything. The other things you could use are um, um, little cutters. Um, some people call these side cutters. I call them wire cutters. They have many names. So these are nice to have for like clipping things, um, like uh, zip ties and things like that. If you're using zip ties and you have to undo them, you know, it's, it's good to have one of those. Needle nose pliers or tweezers, sorry. And then... I usually have needle nose, yeah. Needle nose pliers, especially ones with a, um, a twist or a, a turn on them for like getting in and grabbing stuff. But, I mean, 95%, yeah, it's just a Phillips whatever that you need. Uh, screws and washers. Okay, there's another four. Okay, so there's all our screws with washers. We don't, shouldn't need more of these. But we will need these for putting on the, um, uh, the block onto the top of the processor. So yes, we will need those. Oh, one more. Felix, hey. Felix, we are um, putting parts from an old computer. So there's this old case that um, I think it's a Cooler Master High, fair, high Airflow case. Yeah, HAF case. We're moving everything over into this, and we're reusing his um, motherboard RAM CPU. He bought a new cooler that we're dealing with right now, which is an all-in-one. You know how I feel about those. Don't like them, but that's what he wants. That's what he brought me, so that's what we're doing. Uh, also putting in some, uh, some more RGB fans. So this thing's going to be pretty and hopefully quiet. All right. Uh... it up into my screwdriver. Washers aren't cooperating. Oh, come on. It's stuck to my finger. Okay. 
so I got one in each corner now I can go back and fill in the rest This one right here looks like it's a little bit towards the edge. I'm going to undo this a little bit so I can move it and actually get the screw in. Okay, go back and tighten them all down. I think I did that one, yeah, it's all the way. This thing comes with a dust filter, but it doesn't really make sense to leave it on there. That's probably backwards. Yeah. So the the deal with this is the the airflow is coming up out of this thing. So why would you want to trap the, the dust there? But it's the top. I don't know. Does it make sense to leave it there? What do you all think? Could always take it off, but... Um, so, the idea behind having the, um, the cables towards the back is so that I can then take them and move them to the back of the case. Because that's where the, uh, the fan hub, I think it's a fan slash RGB hub. Where'd it go? Probably. So that's RGB. And those are fans, yeah. So all the all the fans can can plug in here, I think. Uh, three across the top. Three here, which we're going to be adding here. That will leave this fan right here that doesn't have a place to plug in. But that's all. I, we can. It goes around the back. We can plug it into one of the um the fan uh, headers on the motherboard. So. And this one's not RGB, so it doesn't need to be controlled anyway from from the software. Yeah, so then you have a nice clean look. Get on through there. Oh, come on. 
There we go. Okay. So this thing, there's the logo. It's got a peel on it. I guess we'll leave that on there for now. Um, this I need to take off the cover and swap these guys out. These are for those are for Intel, and these guys here are for AMD. that and it's got the thermal compound goes on top let's see best way to do this there's there's some play at the back of it you have to kind of push it through are you gonna stay Okay, looks like it might stay. Oh, didn't stay. <laughs> it moved a bit. Okay, but you basically stick this on there, and then, I don't know if y'all can see this, but let me move it back a little bit. And you screw the thumbs on. Yeah, but you kind of have to push it from the back side. All right, let's try it. laying it like that. So I'm reaching around, and I'm, I'm holding the, uh, the back plate in place. Screws. Ah, one fell. All right, so I'm going to the opposite corner, just getting it on there. I'm having to kind of push down a little bit as I turn it to get it on. Where'd you go? There it is. Okay, and then tighten it on. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm tightening it down till I feel some resistance and going from diagonal corners. Okay. And then I can come back. Pick up the thing I dropped. And let's see, let's do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just going from diagonal corners to tighten it down evenly on each side. So that's tight. That's tight. Tight. And tight. So you just want them tight. Don't sit there and like really crank it down. There's no point in that. All right. And let's see. This looks like it probably goes to the fan hub. Has it got a spot for that? Yes, it does. And this other doohickey is most likely supposed to go to the uh, the CPU the CPU header right here. But let's go ahead and undo it a little bit and stick it through the other side for now. So you, you generally want to have as much cable as possible going to the other side of the motherboard. And then you bring it back through when it's needed to plug in. It tends to give you the cleanest look. Right, like that. nice okay so the cooler's in yay 
It comes with a, a white faceplate and an Allen wrench. You, um, if you want to switch it to a white faceplate, you just unscrew these four Allen wrenches. That brings that fa that plate off, and then you just put this guy back on. Uh, I think it looks pretty nice with the black one. But that's something else I will put in the motherboard box, so the the client can swap it out if he wants to. All right, fans in the front. Oh. Okay, how are you in there? Uh, okay, so we're re replacing this fan with three um, RGBs. How are we doing in chat? Uh, is there anything specific what maybe beginner's mistake uh, makes? I mean, there's, there's tons of mistakes. I mean, that's... I guess the most common thing uh, I would say is um, the cabling. Issues with cabling and not hooking things up that need to be hooked up. So like up here, uh, the CPU power, a lot of times I have people bring me their computers and they didn't plug that in. What happens if you don't plug that in? The computer will turn on, but you don't get video. Um, the um, the pins down here where you plug in the um, the power button, the reset button, um, power LED, things like that, they're they're very small and it's it's easy to get those on wrong. Um, and in that case, you know the computer doesn't turn on, or it turns on uh, but the reset button doesn't work, or the LED um, power LED doesn't work, or it it does something weird. And it's all about just getting it on the right pins and on the LEDs. Uh, the hard drive LED and power LED, um, it's, um, there's a polarity to it. You want to make sure that the plus, um, the cable has a plus on it, is on the left side. Not pushing the RAM all the way in. I've had a few people bring me their computers and all it needed was for the RAM to be pushed in. I mean, they just had the RAM kind of sitting in the slot but not pushed in. They, they, were, they were afraid of breaking it, so they didn't push it as hard as it needed to go. So Moe's says take off the upper filter. I'm going to go with Moe's suggestion on that one. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Moe's on that one. Moe's helped, helped me out uh, massively um, a couple of streams ago. He, he found uh, the, uh, the way through the labyrinth of, uh, of uh, the support page for uh, this one particular motherboard in order to get to the drivers. Um, yay, Moe's. Oh, yeah, fans. Okay, so it's typical fan screws that are holding this in right now, and chances are the, the new fans uh, come with them. Oh, you know what? I think this front piece comes out. Captive screw, yeah. Okay. And this thing, yeah, cool. Right. Let's go ahead and get this thing's cable out. says taking your time is key yeah absolutely don't don't try and you know break records for building a computer there are no points for faster building of stuff okay 
perfectly good fan. I don't think we have a reason for it to be in this case. I don't think there's another spot to put one, but I'll, I'll look. Um, okay, so let's get out the... Uh... Will you stand up like that if I put my mouse there? Ah, look at that. Okay, let's get out the new fans. RGB fans for the front are pointless. You're not going to see them. Well, that's uh, that's true with this um, with the the front of this case. That's one of the things I mentioned earlier. Um, it's a solid front, so I mean it's it's not not great. Um, it's the only air coming in, aside from maybe from little cracks around the side, is going to be coming from here on the side. So not great uh, air input, um, but the RGB lights will be seen on the inside of the case. So not uh, not completely pointless to have the, the lights on. Someone pointed out earlier that, um, and I'm not sure about the price on this, they mentioned that for 15 bucks you can get the um, flow version of the front of the case, which is... Um, uh, mesh and that would allow you to see the fans but more importantly it will allow lots of air in lots of cool air in the front All right. okay is these three come with an RGB uh, hub in case you don't have one we do so we probably won't use this but that's nice to have and it comes with Four, um, four fan screws per fan, which we will use. Uh, installation stuff. So it talks about if you're going to use the, uh, the the hub that comes with this, where to plug it in on the motherboard, and then different uh, different languages. We don't need that. The three fans. So, do these things have indicators of direction? Yes, they do. Okay, cool. So, on a lot of fans, not all of them, but it's nice when this is here. You can look. There's an arrow that shows you the direction of airflow. The, the general rule, and someone said this earlier, um, is that the air goes this way. So, if you want the air to come out that way, you put the, uh, the logo on the outside. So, it's like the logo is opposite to airflow. That's the rule. So we have three of these, and I want to make it so that the cables go that way, because it's going to be like that. And I want the cables to come like through here and to the back. So that's the direction we want. And so like that. Sometimes you can twist these on just to get them started. Yeah, that kind of fit. So right now I'm reusing the the, uh, the fan screws that came out of the uh, the fan that was in there. I would leave the front cover off. It was to me, nobody sees how pretty it is anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm going to check is um, the temperatures with and without the front panel. 
because if the temperatures don't really drop, if we give it, um, if we take away the front panel, then it wouldn't be advantageous to spend the $15 or whatever it is for the, um, uh, for the mesh panel. So what I did is I, I switched this to a higher um, torque. So this should go through now. Yeah. I leave this on, on low torque, especially for laptops, because you don't want to over torque um, screws that go into plastic, like are on a lot of laptops. one kind of like that yeah oh. should have got more screws out if you've joined recently and wondering what's happening um, we are moving uh, motherboard CPU RAM power supply and graphics card from an older case, which is a high airflow case, um, to a new um, NZXT H7 case. Hey, Brill Pizza. Yeah, and these, this, this tends to work pretty well. You just you get them started just with your fingers, and you can come back and actually screw them in. Okay, so let's see. We do put the bottom in. Lay it, lay it back. through here. The other way to do this, which I think would result in less uh, airflow, would be to have the fans on the outside here. I think that would still, it would work, like it would physically fit, and that would also um, let you put the, um, the cables through here more easily. But I wonder if we do this and then take them through, if it'll still, if it'll still work out as far as like laying it back. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's see if 
I get these screws to go back in. No. plug in the cables into the fan hub. That's the extra fan hub. I guess we'll put that with the motherboard box. Okay, what else can we do here? Okay, yeah, I guess let's go ahead and hook up all the fans. thinking having the, um, the fan hub up here because the power supply is going to be here we're putting a solid state drive or not solid state drive we're putting a hard drive down here and it looks like it's held in with a thumb screw ah, that I can't undo because it's on there too freaking tight what about this What about with pliers? I got to move a little bit. Okay. So yeah, the three and a half inch drive that we have will go in here, and this is what I was undoing. Um, it's just a little captive. Uh, to the thumb screw and now it's locked you undo there we go okay so yeah this is where we're gonna put the hard drive but let's hold off on that okay, so it's got a it looks like double-sided 3m so that you kind of put it on there and then stick this somewhere and up there kind of makes sense to me but this has to get down to the bottom of the motherboard. Let's see how far we can go. How long are you? So this goes to that side of power. That's where it gets the power from. And it'll come down here. And then this guy, if we have it up there, it has to come all the way down through there and then up through the bottom. Yeah, that'll be fine. So we'll put it up there. Okay, but the stuff to plug in, so we've got, this is fan, actual fan power. And this will come around and plug in for RGB. So you kind of do that. And yeah, we got to do that for all of them. Okay. Fan side. And RGB. This guy has to come up from the bottom. It's got two tracks to put uh, to put cables through. Let's go ahead and undo those a little bit. We'll see if we can get this to come up through here without too much trouble. So that's the three front fans. And we also need to 
plug in the three top fans, which conveniently are right here. When you do this, there's a, there's a little bit of plastic here that matches up with a bit of plastic there, so you can't put it in backwards or upside down or any way you could think of doing it wrong. Buddy. There it is. It just fell. Okay, so that's all connected. Um, and let's see. This guy coming from the cooler plugs in over here. And it looks like it's got a couple of pieces of plastic on one side which match up with plastic hopefully right here although it's not immediately obvious okay there it is so there's a missing bit of plastic right there which matches up with a little plastic uh, with a bump <laughs> I guess so it shouldn't go any other way although I'm pushing and it's not going so am I just wrong about this? I'm probably wrong. There, there's there's some on the other side too. But there's a bump right there and a bump right there. Is that the differentiator? Yes, popped right in, okay. So yeah, this will just go up there and then we'll have to tidy up cable some. Just a little bit though. Correct. Yes. So push it down. Peel it. Stick her on up there. And if you have to take it back off, it shouldn't be too difficult. So we got a bunch of stuff right there, and these are wanting to come out. Okay, that's connected. So that came through, and this needs to go back through and connect to the other side. Uh, let's see, let's do that. Oh, come on. I'm just wanting to get it to stick here so I can stick it on the other side and plug it in. So that little guy should plug into the CPU, um, to the CPU fan header. Alright, CPU fan is right here. CPU fan, then CPU optional. So it'd be like a, for a secondary um, fan. And what this is, um, it should be a, like a tachometer. Um, 
it just lets the uh, the computer know that there is a fan uh, cooling the processor and stop worrying about it. <laughs> so if, if you don't do that, if you don't plug in um, something into CPU, you'll usually get some kind of an error as the computer boots up every time saying, hey, there's no, um, no fan um, cooling the CPU. Mm. On, a, on a more typical build uh, that I usually do, it's like the fan on the cooler um, has the cable that plugs there and, and plugs in there, and then that's where it gets its power. That's how you, you control its speed and everything like that. But since this is an all-in-one cooler, that the fans are kind of separate from that, it's a good idea to basically tell the computer that, hey, there is something there. Stop worrying about it. There is something there cooling stuff. I'm just wrong about this uh, about this twisty tie. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna go around that and stick a couple of them together if it'll let me. Yeah. Okay. So this guy needs to come probably through here be plugged in on the underside and this is for the fan that's back here um, it's got it coming down here but where in the hell is it gonna plug in let's look and see what we got fan headers there's two right there so we could plug it in there or we could plug it into the CPU optional. That's not a bad spot for it. I like it. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So CPU optional. What we'll do is have it come up. Go through right here. CPU optional. here so this connector is going to be powering the uh, the fans and we'll have it down here and we can connect it with the same cable that we connect the hard drive with which yeah let's go ahead and do the hard drive so we're gonna need coarse threaded screws I think I saw some in here Oh yeah, we use them for the motherboard. Yeah, these guys will work fine. We need four of them. That's more than four. He brought he brought over a five and a quarter inch drive, which there's no place to put that in this computer. We also need a SATA power cable. Okay, so... Oh, this thing's got screws in it already. Alright, well we don't need those. We will reuse these screws. So right now he's been running, he's been running his computer off of a 2 terabyte hard drive. And I mentioned to him that a solid state drive would be a good idea, and he said yes. So I've got him a, um, a one terabyte Samsung 980 coming tomorrow. Okay, 
And this is just a, a five and a quarter inch drive from this whole case. All right, so like this, probably has a little, yeah, a little ledge it sits on. So you want it so that when you put it in, you can plug in the cables. So just to get the orientation right. If I slide this thing, yeah, so you can see the, the screw holes right there. So we can actually put six through, but I think we're going to be okay with five. I'm sorry, four. drive it goes into here but let me see so these kind of slip into rails that are down here there's not a chance you'll be able to see this I don't think but oh and you can actually you can put it farther forward that's nice so it, it was closer to the center here but I think we might be able to make move it a little bit forward and then screw it in hopefully yeah there you go nice that gives us plenty of space for the power supply not that I think we need it this is not that uh, large of a power supply yeah that'll give us tons of room though all right let's go ahead and hook up the SATA power though before we put this thing in so SATA slash peripherals for here and we plug that in and this will give us power for the um the rgb fan hub and the hard drive okay and the direction of the fan should be at the bottom as long as the case has a air intake down here and this does what that does is it brings cool air from the outside of the case and blows it out the back here <clears throat> Excuse me. And we can actually use these screws to hold the power supply in. They should work. They're coarse threaded. How are we doing, everybody? You have to lift up on, I think. Yeah. And then screw. Yeah. thing before I forget. Okay, what are we doing now? <sighs> All right, let's uh, let's cut this guy out. So this is this is one of the uh, the power cables for the graphics card. We can go ahead and run it up to where it needs to be. They had stuck it together with some electrical tape. Um, so we can either come from the bottom and plug in the power or kind of go over the top. I'm kind of partial to going over the top. That way you don't have a cable like running through here. It just kind of comes out there, runs over the, the graphics card and plugs in. Uh, where's their graphics card? Unless this thing has power in a strange place. No, it's right there. So yeah, it would come from the back over here, plug in, as opposed to coming from the bottom. I like that. I'll do that. All right, power and power will come up through here. And through like 
acá. Hopefully that's long enough. Uh, if it's not, we can undo this one and leave this guy on the other side. Let's do that. Right, it's it's real tight. Of, yeah, so I think that'll be be a better bet to, to get to work right. So kind of up there. That took talent. See what I mean about making mistakes? You make mistakes, you move on. It's fine. Same thing with this guy. Probably about the same way. Which, hey, why did I just put that down when I had to bring this one too? I made a mistake. It's okay. Right, so those two will go through there. This guy will do something very similar. Come through here and plug in. What do you call it on? You're caught on the RAM. Okay, so yeah, it plugs in right there. Uh, 8 pin CPU will come up and go through there, and we can kind of probably stick it down there when these these loops. Uh, SATA power will remain back here. Okay, yeah, so let's. I guess we can. Alright, so 8 pin CPU power comes through like that. And you stick them together like that. And plug them in. Sometimes it's easier to do one than the other. So I did one, and there's the other. Yeah, and that empty one there. Um, I mentioned that earlier. This this um, power supply doesn't have an extra four to go there. I have yet to see a system that requires that. Um, supposedly, if you do like serious, like massive overclocking, you know, giving it tons of power, you might need the extra four, but. You know, if it comes to that, you'll have to buy a new power supply. Or um, I wouldn't be surprised. I need to look at this. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if they make um, like Molex or SATA um, to four pin or eight pin um, CPU power. But I, I have yet to look that up because I have yet to see a need for it. <sighs> Graphics card power will go through here as well. Uh, actually, go around the 24 pin. I think would be a good thing to do. So kind of like that. So we got 8 pin, and we got. The graphics coming through. Yeah, let's go ahead and put the CPU or the GPU in. Okay, so the slot for it is right here. It is a two slot cooler, so we need to remove that plate and that plate. And keep these with the motherboard box in case you need them in the future. Oh, come on. The 
The M.2 solid state drive is not going to be here until tomorrow morning. I'll do that when it comes in, but it's just a matter of putting it right here. And I'm not sure if he wants me to copy everything from the 2 terabyte onto it, if there's space, or if he wants a fresh install of Windows. I'll have to ask him about that. But the faceplate goes to the left of the motherboard's edge, but not on the outside. Follow that rule. Just kind of look at the, uh, the slot, line it up, and push. And that's it. And you can actually see it there. The, um, the eject thing uh, kind of popped out. If you go to take this out, it's locked in because of this little piece of plastic right here. To, un, uh, to eject it, you have to push down on that, push it towards the motherboard. So they're both in. And for this, these, these two screws, you don't want to crazy tighten them down. Um, you just want them snug. Um, this, the, uh, the metal that they go into on some cases is so thin. Although I'm not sure if this is true anymore. I mean, that piece of advice comes from back like 20, 25 years ago when I was building computers and the cases were crappy. Just don't over tighten them. If, if you over tighten them, you can strip out the, um, the metal there. And then you just can't tighten them. So you end up having to just screw them. And they just spin forever. If that happens, uh, what you can do is uh, just get some thicker um, screws, you know, wider, girthier screws, and get them in there. Okay, so that's kind of kind of tight. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can get the eight pin in there. So you stick the six and the two together and they only go in one way. There's a little bit of plastic on this underside bit right here that you all can't see, but it's there. Turn them over and get them in. And then the second one is just a, just a six pin so you don't use the, the extra two. Yeah, like that. I like that. It's clean. The The alternative, and this will actually come down a little bit and you know, look a little bit better. The other way to do it is to bring it up from the from the bottom here, but then you have a cable ringing across here as opposed to, it's just kind of clean looking, I think. I like it. Uh, SATA cable. SATA data cable. I think I saw one in the, in the old box. Yeah. You come through. You are connected. Okay. So we just need one. Um, and I should have plugged this in before I did the motherboard. I can probably get this. So it has to. Let's see. Uh, you have to come through here. Make the turn. get in there. So I don't know if y'all saw that. I think you did. It, it plugged in right there. And this side goes down to the hard drive. What else? How are we doing, chat? Uh, hi, so just wondering, is this any mistakes that are beginner or making... Didn't someone ask that question before? about common mistakes. I mean, I think I mentioned common mistakes before. Go back like an hour ago. <laughs> and uh, some someone mentioned that like an hour ago. And I, uh, I, I gave a, a list of common mistakes I see people make. And these are mistakes that people make while they're trying to build their computer. They realize they, they, they just don't have confidence they can do it, so they call me and I do it for them. And then I make, I make mistakes too. But that's all right. 
Oh, this is nice. So this, this motherboard doesn't have a place to put this, but the case comes with a cap on it so you can protect your connector. So that's not going anywhere. Um, I suppose we'll just kind of leave it down at the bottom of the case. Uh, let's go ahead and connect up the SATA data cable, just like that. And what did I do with the... Uh, the SATA power. Yeah, that's right here. So I need one going to the drive. When you're ever plugging in SATA power, there's a kind of an L shape to it. That little bit right there matches up with a bit of plastic on the drive. And that's how you know you're putting it in right. Just like that. That will go down there. And we need one of these connections for... That's supposed to go up there. Where is SATA power coming uh, from... There it is. So this right here is um, needs SATA power uh, that powers fans. So just one of the extra ones. You can kind of see it there. A little bit of plastic matches up with a indentation there. Stick them together and you're good. So yeah, this is coming together. Um, what is this? HD audio. HD audio is over here. So we need to... Let me see, can we come across the top and, no, that won't work. We need to go down the bottom and come across, I think under here. And go up through hopefully a hole there. Yep, I think there's a hole. And I'll plug that in on the other side. I think that went through. If I don't find it when I look on the other side, I didn't do it right. And this is nice. The um, the front panel connectors are, are one piece. So this will go just directly on the motherboard. Um, and this guy, where... So this is USB 3.0. It's going to be these two ports right here. Without a place to plug in that other connector, that USB-C port's not going to work. But if he needs that to work, we can get him a... I think it's about a $25 or $30 card. Uh, okay, so none across the bottom. There's one right here. So we will go through here. There's a bit of plastic right there on the um, on the connector that matches up with a missing bit of plastic on the motherboard, and I don't think y'all can see this. You might see it. It's there. You know, I have seen a few people mess up the, um, the USB 3.0 connector. How I just put that in there, it's, um, there's like 20 pins, there's a lot of pins, they're very thin. And I've had a few times people um, bend them. Uh, if that happens, you basically just reach in there with something plastic and you unbend it, something small. Um, you can use metal as well. Just make sure you have uh, you don't have power connected to the motherboard when you're doing that because you don't want to jump those together. That'll make stuff stop working. Um, also, the plastic that goes around that USB 3.0, I've seen pop off a few times. And with that, that happens you don't really worry about it. You just kind of stick it back in place and plug it back in. It's fine. As long as the, um, the cable is over the pins and in and they're straight, you're good. This, for F panel, front panel, I need to stick it up through the bottom here, I think. Let's see. Is there a place there? We will go through here. A spot to plug it in right here so if you look at it there's there's nine pins right there got nine holes with uh, one missing one missing hole and that matches up to the part that does not have a pin so that's how you know you get it in straight that's a little bit tight with the graphics card all right left-handed it there you go 
And that's through. We're getting pretty close to powering this thing on, guys. Um, did I plug in the front fan? Or the, the back fan? Yes, I did. I plugged it into the motherboard. Uh, need to plug in the USB. So this will give you control over the uh, over the lights and the fans uh, through software. And you plug it into the motherboard in order for the system to basically see it. You know. So yeah, let's go through here. the bottom and there's usually a couple of USB headers down here and they're labeled USB there's one two and just like the front panel there's uh, there's nine pins one of which is missing uh, you match them up and plug it in there you go I think that's everything plugged in. How are we doing? Yes, thank you, Roger. Remind everyone to hit the like button because this is good stuff, right? Are you having a gaming PC as well? This is a gaming PC, um, no doubt about it. It doesn't have the uh, the newest graphics card. It's a 1080 Ti. I mean, it's not a bad graphics card. It's just a little bit on the old side. How did you start building PCs? Anybody was doing some tech thing, or how come you became a PC builder? I wanted to build my own computer, um, and I understand being being um, you know scared and unsure about it. My my first PC build, um, I think I actually got somebody that I was working with to help me with it. Um, yeah, but then after that, after just watching him do it, I just started doing it myself. But that's how I got started. I just wanted to build my own computer. So right now the cabling's a bit of a mess. Um, I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to make sure it works good. <laughs> and then, assuming everything works okay, I'll come back and uh, and tidy this up. It's not too bad, though. Um, most of the stuff will go in the tracks, including that one there. And this will come over here. These will all button up. We're gonna have a bit of a clump up here, but that's all right. The case side will go on fine. Yeah, this is this is gonna be fine. Um, all right, let's get some of this together. So that's a bunch of. Let's see. That's case stuff. This is cooler stuff. It all really needs to go in the motherboard box, which I have somewhere. I swear. No, I don't have the motherboard box because it's a it's not a new system. Uh, I'll find a box to put all the stuff in. Let's we'll we'll put it that way. But yeah, let's move this stuff out of the way because I need to put the computer here so I can hook it up. Bunch of extra plastic and bags. Let's put everything in here for now. It'll probably all fit. So this is just extra screws, extra fan hub, plastic cover, screws, trash, zip tie which is also trash yeah okay oh, these two all right uh let's see it's backwards this thing got heavy ah <sighs> All right, 
So this is mouse and keyboard. They're wireless mouse and keyboards and they're just little dongles. I put them on these little USB extenders because it makes it much easier to uh, not lose them. Too often in the past I put little, you know, wireless dongles in the back of people's computers and they're so small I forget about them. Okay. HDMI. Main power in and on. And got some RGB on the motherboard. And where's the power button on this thing? There. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's got RGB. Oh, I forgot to plug in the HD audio. I'll do that in a minute. Uh, but are we getting video? Switch this monitor to HDMI. Video. Select property boot device, insert boot media, press any key. Okay, so it's it's not... Hi. <laughs> Abby, Abby stuck her head in for a minute. Hang on a second, y'all. I'm back. Y'all should hear me again. Uh, did you ever damage a customer PC parts? Have I ever damaged one? Not really. Um, I, I mean, a couple of times. It's like this one time I had a client's uh, laptop and I was replacing the screen on it. And when I did that, I followed, you know, all the precautions, disconnected the battery. Um, you did all the things I was supposed to, but when I plugged it back in, I got no video. So then I checked it, and um, I tried to get video out of the HDMI port, and that didn't work. And it's like, it was like the computer like deteriorated while I had it. I couldn't locate anything that I did wrong, but it broke while I had it and while I was working on it, so it's my responsibility. On that one, I ended up uh, replacing a couple of parts, and it's like everything I replaced, it improved the situation, but it didn't fix it. And it got to the point where it was it was less expensive to just give the client money to go buy something new. And that's what I ended up doing. I think it was 500 bucks. Um, they took that and they got themselves. I think it was a seven or eight hundred dollar laptop, but it was a fair value given the laptop they had. And I was able to transfer all their files over, so they didn't lose anything. But I mean, something like that. The, another time, um, I was opening up an all-in-one PC, and 
for the most part, those are, are not too bad. You take a couple of screws out of the bottom, you pop the back off, and that gives you access to, to all the internal components, including um, you know RAM and you know, the drives. You can do RAM upgrades, you can do drive upgrades. Oc occasionally, you can do CPU upgrades. But on some of the newer ones I've found, in order to get to the internal components, you have to take the screen off. Well, that's just a bad idea. I mean, <laughs> and I've decided not to work on them, uh, not to open them up if you have to take the screen out. Because one of the times I did it, I was following the directions, getting getting the uh, the plastic or, or the nylon tool underneath the... Um, why is my, my camera keeps going completely bright? That's weird. But I was, I was prying it apart, and the, the screen cracked. It's like I was following the directions, and the screen cracked. I don't take responsibility for that. I mean, if, if to open it up, following the directions that are in the service manual, ends up cracking the screen, that's not me. <laughs> I, I basically told them, look, I followed the directions, it cracked, it was bad design, basically, and I left it at that. Of course, you know, I, I got their files off of it, and, you know, did what I could, but I think the screen was like $300, and no, I'm, I'm not paying for that. They decided not to pay for that. And we just let it go. That was probably the worst one. The uh, the the laptop that deteriorated while I had it was just a series of unfortunate events. I, I don't know I don't know exactly what what happened, but it did. It's pretty rare though, you know, breaking things. One of the reasons I um I mostly don't work on like um, Asus laptops, MSI laptops, things like that, is because there's no service manuals for them. So to open them up, you're going in blind. So it's easy to break things when you're taking it apart because you don't know that underneath the part you're taking apart is like a little cable that you have to pull the part off a little bit, reach under there, undo the cable. How the hell would you know that without a service manual? So I basically just don't, I don't work on those very much. Uh, okay, so back to this. <laughs> So we got reboot and select a proper boot device. Most likely the um, the hard drive that's in here and uh, the install of Windows was done under non uh, UEFI mode. So it's it's going to be a, a legacy thing. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. It's got a working hard drive in it, so I'm trying to be gentle with it. Okay, and I'm going to switch to tripod. in and let's plug in power so it doesn't die again last stream I did I had to plug my phone in for a bit it died while it was on my head okay Grab the mouse and keyboard and let's do control delete to reboot and we'll press delete to go to go into the BIOS Delete or F2 should get you into the BIOS on, on most um, most computers that you build yourself. It says so right there. Delete or F2 at the bottom. Okay, so it sees the hard drive. It's right there in the middle. Two terabyte Samsung drive. It sees two 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM. Our 3800X CPU. Um, we can... I guess go ahead and turn on DOCP, although we'll probably, I'm going to leave that off for now. We're probably going to update the update the, uh, the BIOS, and we'd have to reset it after the fact. But in order to get this thing to boot to the hard drive, I'm going to F7, which is advanced, and going over to boot. Oh, come on. It's so difficult to click. And we need CUS CSM compatibility support module. It is enabled, but it didn't boot to the hard drive. Hmm, interesting. So, F10. And I'm going to press F8 to bring up um, the boot menu. 
F8 on the keyboard. F8's usually right for a boot menu. Okay, so by default it was trying to boot to a network adapter. Okay, let's go down to the Samsung drive and press enter. Huh, so it's it's not seeing a copy of Windows. Let me see. I'm going to plug in a USB flash drive that has Windows 10 on it as, a, as the installer, basically. That's not the right way. Just plugging it into the, the front USB. Or was that the right way? It just didn't go. Yeah, it was the right way. Just a tight fit. Wow, a really tight fit. Jesus. Wow, okay. All right, so control delete again, and we'll do F8 to bring up that boot menu, and it should show my, uh, my installer flash drive at this point. The computer's nice and uh, nice and quiet though. The the microphone's like two inches away from the top of the case. I wonder if y'all can hear it. Okay, so we're doing Walgreens. There's there's two options. One UEFI. That's the newer boot version. Uh, the bottom one is the compatibility. The the SATA 6G. That Samsung right there. It's not showing that it has a UEFI partition on it. Um, otherwise, it would have uh, it would show up there as an option under UEFI. So we're going to boot into my Walgreens Infinite, which is the flash drive that has a copy of Windows 10 on it, in the non-UEFI version. And what, what I'm going to look to see is if there's even a partition on this drive. And if there is, you know. If there's a C drive, you know, is there a users folder, is there a Windows folder, that kind of stuff. So next. And if we wanted to install Windows 10 on here, we would go to install now. But repair your computer gives you troubleshooting options. And you can go to command prompt and C, C colon. There is something there. DIR for directory. <laughs> there's there's really nothing there. Uh, D drive. D colon. DIR. That is my flash drive. E colon. Nothing. I don't think there's anything on that hard drive. Um, I wonder if he... Because I asked him about M.2. He didn't say he already had one. He asked me to buy him one. But there's no copy of Windows that I can see on this hard drive. So what was he booting to before? Well, anyway, um, I'll give him a call. Um, it would make sense to wait until the one terabyte drive, the M.2 solid state drive comes tomorrow morning. Put that in and reinstall Windows 10 onto it, or he may he won't. He may want uh, Windows 11. I can ask him that too. Hmm. Did anyone notice the temperature in the BIOS listed? Exit. Turn the PC off. And pull my flash drive. Wow, that's in there tight. Turn it back on. And we're going to go back into the BIOS. I'm just curious what uh, what temperature the CPU is sitting at with it not really doing anything. Okay, motherboard temperature is 37. CPU temperature is 42 right now. Not bad. Yeah, but without a copy of Windows to boot to, we can't we can't really stress test it. Let's see what else could we do? I guess I could I could hook up another solid state drive. 
install windows onto that and then we can actually troubleshoot it. Yeah, let me see. What do I got? I have quite a few M.2 drives in here, but the vast majority of them, I think all of them are SATA based. That wouldn't be a very good test. Um, let's see. Do I have just a... Yeah! Two and a half inch drive. Uh, super old, but it works. 120 gigabyte drive, but this would be good for just testing, basically. Install Windows onto it and uh, do stress tests and temperature tests for that matter. Turn it off. But all the fans are working and the drives are working or the one drive I connected is working. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's see. I'm going to plug this in just temporarily down at the bottom and we're going to tidy up the cables and get it buttoned up so I can do thermal testing. You all want to see thermal testing? See uh, the difference between having the front uh, cover on versus not? Sorry, I think I bumped the microphone. Disconnect that. Oh, and we do need to go ahead and plug in the uh, HD audio. So it's a little bit different than, than USB. It's still missing a pin, but it's in a different location. You all can see that? Yeah, you probably can right there. And there's a missing pin on its connector. And this is usually at the bottom left of the motherboard. It's occasionally up here, but that's highly unusual. Okay. Disconnect everything. Okay. Let's turn this thing around. That's a chunk as big. Sorry, I think I bumped the microphone again. Okay, so. up put this guy through there and this guy also through there flatten it out and down same thing with this guy those guys are good where they are okay flatten it out and this guy over here down okay and I'm gonna pull out this this is SATA data so you have to kind of push on that in order to eject it sometimes the power will have that as well this one doesn't and we're just gonna swap this guy in so SATA power SATA data and this guy's just gonna sit right on top right there
this side. Uh, looks like it just pops on. Okay, so the bottom, these little nubbins, I guess, go into three holes there. this down. Hmm. A little bit too much thickness right here. Try and make that thinner. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do this one. Too much thickness. Going to run much cooler without that front cover. I think it probably will too, but we're going to test it and see. Okay, so just kind of getting stuff into the grooves that are there. to put a little too much right there. Right, let's see if we can get it to go now. Yeah, much better. And the alignment's not quite right. There we go. Nice. Uh, see, does the top go on first or does the front come off? I don't remember. Or does it matter for that matter? Okay, so that's the top down there. Let's try it. Right over the top. Probably. Oh, it would help if I put it the right direction. So same thing. Nubbins at the bottom. Light up and in. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, it's all buttoned up. I'm not going to give it internet yet because we're reinstalling Windows. back and since that USB flash drive with Windows 10 is the Windows 10 installer is there it'll probably just boot into Windows All right, mouse keyboard got video cool and looking for the spinning dots check media presence no media detected really Oh, you know what? It was it was by default trying to boot to a network. So it just I just saw the Windows 10 logo. It's probably gonna come back and show again. That blinking cursor at the top is pretty typical. Oh, and I can see that right here. This needs to go down some. Yeah, that corner was still up. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Booting into Windows 10. So I'm moving my camera to a tripod.
too close. Pretty close. Yeah. Right, next. Install now. <laughs> I'm gonna need to work on that cable a minute. This uh, the side won't stay. It, it's it's a little tight. Uh, when I open it up again to um, to put back uh, the connection to the client's hard drive, I'll work on it a little bit more. It it can be flatter. There's there's a couple of spots that have a little bit too much cables going through them. There's there's two um, vertical cable channels. I should be able to move some of them to one and then some to the other to kind of even it out. It'll be fine. Uh, I don't have a product key, so. If you, if you don't have a 25-digit product key for, for Windows, you don't have to give it one. Uh, if you say you don't have one, it'll ask you what version of Windows, what edition of Windows you want to install. And for most people, I do Windows 10 Home. If, uh, if you're thinking Pro will give you better performance, it won't. Um, what it does is it allows you to connect to a domain, which is something you do at a, a large business or organization that has like a domain controller and Windows Server and all that kind of stuff. And it also allows you to um, fully encrypt the data on the drive. If you don't need to do that, you don't need to pay for Pro. So, accept license terms, do custom install. And looks like there's a tiny partition, which I will delete, leaving me a 120 gigabyte solid state drive with unallocated space. So I'll just click new and it will create the partitions for me. Chip says, or just log in with your MS account and you won't need a key. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's true. Just because you have a Microsoft account doesn't mean you have a, a license of Windows attached to that Microsoft account. Or am I wrong about that? How, how how do you how do you think that works? Or how do you know from your experience the that works, Chip? Let me see if I get my, my phone to stop trying to fix the uh, the autofocus. Let's see, normal tap, tap. Hopefully, focus will be stable for now. It is true. I never need to put in a, a key. Yeah, but I mean, your your copy of Windows. You, okay, you may not know this, and most people don't know this. So whenever whenever you um, buy a new computer from a major manufacturer, um, Dell, HP, you know, Alienware, big big man manufacturers like that, the 25-digit uh, key for Windows is in the motherboard. It's somewhere in the BIOS, some chip. I don't know exactly where it is. But when you install Windows, it won't even ask you what uh, we won't ask you for a 25 digit key. It won't ask you for the ins uh, for the addition of Windows you want to install. It gets it from the motherboard and it just does it. So that may be what you're seeing, Chip. That's likely what you're seeing. And the, the way it works, if you build a computer yourself like this one, um, this motherboard and it's almost certainly had a copy of Windows on it. And as long as it was um, that copy of Windows was given a 25-digit key from the user, uh, that actually gets sent to a Microsoft activation server, and it's kept on record. So when you install Windows the next time, um, it'll still ask you for the key at, at the at the time of install. But as long as you choose the addition of Windows Home versus Pro, whatever you had before, when it connects to the internet, it will go out to the activation server, say, "Hey." I recognize this motherboard, and we already have an activation for it, so it's just activated. And that's that's the way that works. Okay, looks like it's just about ready to do the first restart. All right, I'm going to hit restart now. And when it goes black, 
I'm going to pull my flash drive. Man, that's in there. Tight fit. Uh, crit heal. So I have to buy Windows every time I get a new laptop computer. Well, no. It like uh, So I just said if you buy um, like a new laptop, you can't build your own laptop. It comes from the manufacturer. The 25-digit code for Windows is on the motherboard. So Windows will go get it from there. You don't have to buy Windows again. Every time you re reinstall Windows, uh, you don't have to add, you don't have to buy another key. It just gets it from the motherboard and you're good. As long as you choose the addition of Windows correctly. So if you have Windows 10 Home that you that came with your computer and you install Windows 10 Pro, it's not going to work. You're going to have to give it a 25-digit uh, key. And as far as buying Windows goes, you don't have to buy it from Microsoft. It's it's like minimum 100 bucks from Microsoft for an OEM version. You if you go on Google and do a search for Windows 10 Home cheap, you'll find a key for like you know 15, 20 bucks, and they work. That gets into a like a gray area of you know what's really legitimate, but it works. Whether it's fully legitimate or not, it works. Yeah, so Chip, when whenever you're whenever you're you know, logging in with your Windows account, that I I ser I highly doubt that has anything to do with whether or not you need a key. Most likely, there's already a key associated with your computer's motherboard, um, associated to it on a Microsoft activation server. So whenever you connect to the internet, it activates. It has nothing to do with your login. Oh, okay, so that was okay. So you asked on the previous stream, and now I forgot what you asked. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, about the beginner mistakes. I think I've covered it twice now. I haven't used a key since Windows 7 Ultimate. Yeah. Well, the thing is about uh, so that that's another that's another good topic of conversation. Windows 7 Ultimate would have been a free upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. So as long as you did the upgrade to Windows 10 Pro you have a activated copy of Windows 10 Pro um, associated with your computer's motherboard. And that's how it works. What if I buy one with DOS and want to install Windows later? Does my key from Link to Microsoft not work? Um, well, DOS is really old. I can't see that you'd actually want that. But um, so if Let's see best way to best way to put this. Once once you have an activated copy of Windows 10 on your computer, it's associated with your motherboard. The upgrade to Windows 11 is free. You don't have to pay for it. Windows 12 is coming out in a couple of years and most likely you won't have to up, you won't have to pay for the upgrade on it either. You can just install do the upgrade however they do it. Either um, it'll prompt you to do it and just do it, or it will. Um, you can download it um, from Microsoft. You do a search for on Google for download Windows 12. Almost certainly there'll be a link there where you can create a installer for Windows 12, installed on your Windows 11 or Windows 10 for that matter, most likely, and it'll upgrade you to Windows 12. Jumping from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and probably to Windows 12 as well, there's there's going to be some some extra requirements that Microsoft wants you to have, um, like um, having a UEFI based install of Windows, having a TPM 1.2. It's probably going to be TPM 2.2.0 at that point that's required for Windows 12, most likely, um, and also having Secure Boot turned on in the BIOS, but um, Windows 11, uh, the installer for it, you can you can download the ISO for it, which is a, a you know a complete copy of Windows 11 in a, a single file, 
you can modify that with a program called Rufus that strips out those extra requirements and you can install Windows 11 on any computer you want to. I've installed it on a 15 year old computer that I've got over here that I use for diagnostic testing of hard drives and copying and things like that and it works fine. Well, that wasn't my question. Uh, crit heals. Well, your question was, does my key from linked linked to my Microsoft account not work? I don't know that your key is linked to your Microsoft account. You may think it is, but it probably isn't. Your key for Windows is associated with the motherboard in your computer and kept on a Microsoft activation server. You can test that actually. So if, if you reinstall Windows on your computer, you don't log into your Microsoft account, you just do a local account, look and see if your, your copy of Windows is activated. Usually right away it's activated, sometimes it, it takes a couple of minutes, but um, you know, you could try that. I can do a video and prove it or I'd be happy to give you my login info you can see for yourself. That's cool. So, I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying you're probably not right. That the way you think things work are not the way that they work. I'm pretty sure they work the way I think they work because I do this all the time. Um, I've installed Windows on so many computers, you know, and I've found that it works that way that you don't need to log into a Microsoft account in order to activate your copy of Windows. So Chip says, I reformat every six months after the Windows big update. Okay, so yeah, the next time you do it, do it, do it as a test. Instead of logging into your Microsoft account, log in just with a local account, not attached to a Microsoft account, and see if your copy of Windows is activated. I'm thinking it will be. Okay, so you think you, you get it? Cool. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that, but you know, give it a try, see, see what happens. You'll know for sure. Yeah, it won't activate if I log in with a local account. I did that before. Huh, okay, I, I, I don't know what to tell you then. Maybe you do have a, a copy of Windows associated with your um, with your login. But that doesn't make sense either because why why would they allow you to have an activation associated with your login? If that's the case, then any computer you logged in that wasn't activated with Microsoft, the copy of Windows wasn't activated, it would then be activated. And then if you logged it out, would it unactivate itself? I, I don't think so. It activates when I log in, I promise. I mean, you could be right, I just don't think so, Chip. I think it's probably activating because it is activated already, um, because the activation is attached to the motherboard in your computer. Not saying you're lying, just saying you're probably wrong. But I, mean, I could be wrong, you know, it happens. I'm just going off my experience and so are you. Well, I hope it wouldn't keep you away. Some disagreement about Windows activation. There's, there's bigger things to worry about. As long as it works, it's all that really matters.
Kyle Vector, how to put Windows 11 on a Gigabyte B450DS3H motherboard. Um, you basically do what I just did. Um, let me let me show you all the, um, the download page for Windows. Hang on. Switch scenes and open up Google. Um, so do a Google search for download, wrong keyboard. Download. Did you say Windows 10 or Windows 11? It works for either. So did you say Windows? Which Windows did you say? Windows 11. So download Windows 11. This is the link you want. So it's from Microsoft, software download, download Windows 11, Microsoft. You click it, and the option is right here, create Windows 11 installation media. You do download now. You run this program. You give it a, you plug in an, at least an eight gigabyte um, USB flash drive. And just keep in mind that anything you have on that USB flash drive when you create the Microsoft um, Windows installer, it will erase everything. So make sure you don't have you know, important files on it. But um, that will you know, erase it, and it will download the installer onto it, and then you put that flash drive into the computer you want to install Windows 11 on. You reboot the computer. It, uh, it will usually just come up, if you don't have Windows at all on it, it will usually just find the, um, the installer on the USB and boot you right where we just were. Um, and the installer for Windows 11 is... It's the same just about as Windows 10. It looks a little bit different, but this, the steps are, are pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, just run run this back, uh, this this stream back like 20 minutes. You'll you'll see how to how to go through the installer. It's uh, it's free. The uh, the installer is free. If, to go to activate it, that's another thing. If if it's if it's if the computer has never had Windows on it, um, to get get it so that it's not complaining about activation, you do have to give it a 25 digit code. Uh, but you can get uh, those on Google. If you do a search for uh, Windows 11 key cheap. Uh, let's see. G2, G2A.com I've used. And they're selling a pro key. If you if you put home in that search, you'll find it. Um, and it's the home copies uh, key for Windows is usually a bit cheaper. But um, yeah, G2A is great. Um, let's see. Who else down here? All key shop I've used before, and King when I've used before. So yeah, uh, get your copy of Windows from there, or your key for Windows from there. But once once you put that into um, into the activation page of um, of Windows, um, it will associate that key with the motherboard in your computer. So the next time you install Windows, you won't have to give it another key. It'll remember once you connect online. Yeah, there's now I can't let that happen because that way you can just log into any computer and use Windows for free. Yeah, exactly. If if that worked, um, any any copy of if that was the way that your your activation works, any copy of Windows that wasn't activated, if you logged into your account on that computer, that computer would then be activated. I I don't see Microsoft allowing that unless when you logged out of that computer, it lost its activation. But I, I have never seen that be the case. See, on a nice entry 3200G. Okay, yeah, the, the 3200G is the 3000 series version that has integrated graphics. Yeah, that, that, that's a nice one. Um, people have been using that uh, that processor quite a quite a bit um, while the GPUs were so overpriced, but now they're and they come down in price. But still, good way to get a gaming computer going. <laughs> no, that little disagreement about activation stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, download Windows 11 as an ISO. Use Rufus to create media. Plug it into USB port. Hit 
F12 install in Golden. F12 um, is, is, is a pretty common um, uh, boot key to bring up a boot menu. Um, F8 is another. Also, Escape can bring it, uh, bring up the option to do that on HP computers and Gateway for that matter. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the key to press in order to bring up a boot menu is different. And the Rufus thing um, is, is great. I think I mentioned it earlier. Um, it strips out the requirements, the extra requirements for like security and um, boot type and things like that from the Windows 11 installer. So you can install it on any computer, regardless of uh, requirements that Windows 11 otherwise wants. Sorry guys, but I got to figure a way to do this to show you it does happen. How can I do this? F12 is a Dell thing, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks like we're just about, uh, let me see, let me switch over here. Point of view, getting close. Taking a long time on just a moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would work. So a good test for that would be to log in with a local account and see if your computer gets, your copy of Windows gets activated with Microsoft after you connect it to the internet. So don't, don't log into your Microsoft account, but just give it an internet connection and see if, it usually happens right away, sometimes it takes a few minutes to do the activation or to go and check the activation and it says it's activated. That would be a good test. So if you did that, you logged into a local account, but it didn't say activated, and then you switched to your Microsoft account and it did activate, then, I mean, it's not something I've ever heard of, but that would indicate to me that your activation is done through your Microsoft account. I don't think it's gonna happen, but you know, I could be wrong. I have done that before and it will not activate. Okay. Let's see the video evidence though, right? It's been sitting on just a moment for a long time. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. 
Maybe I shouldn't have used the crazy old uh, solid state drive. I don't think I've ever seen just a moment <laughs> last for more than a couple of seconds, even on a super slow computer, and this is not a slow computer. All right, let's see. I'm pressing the power button, holding it down. It's off. Back on. Let's see if it goes further. It's possible that solid state drive isn't uh, isn't very fast, or maybe it has problems. It's very old. I got it out of a, an older computer, and I was keeping it just for in case I I needed a, a solid state drive. An old slow one. Okay, boot back into Windows. Now we're back to just a moment. Oh, come on. I'm going to have to reinstall Windows onto a better solid state drive. That's just, ugh. Okay. Let's do that. And turn this guy back off. to test the solid state drive. <laughs> See if it's any good. Alright, let's open up a brand new one. This is a use as a test. And we will go with a WD Blue 500 gigabyte. Data, power, Okay, so we're back to that, and we need to give it back the Windows 10 installer. Reboot.
So Chip says never used a WD SSD. Yeah, I've had good luck with uh, WD solid state drives. They um, W Western Digital bought SanDisk, I want to say, a couple of years ago, and they um, they basically just bought out you know an, an existing solid state drive manufacturer and you know started putting their name on it. But I've had good luck with them. And SanDisk before that, actually. I bought a lot of SanDisk, uh, SanDisk drives years ago. Reliable, fast, you know, good stuff. Okay, let's do this again. Next, install now. Don't have a product key. Windows 10 Home, next. Agree to the license. Next. Custom install. Highlight the drive and next. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm burping over here. Chip, don't don't send me your login account. Um, I don't think you can even do it um, uh, on here, and you really shouldn't. Um, and also, it wouldn't be a good test. I w in order to test that properly, I would have to have a computer that did not come with Windows 10 or Windows 11 or whatever version of Windows, and also never had a copy of Windows 10 or Windows 11 or Windows 8 or any anything. Um, associated with its motherboard. So I don't even have a computer like that. That would be the only way to test what you're saying. Your your account information would be safe with me if you got it to me in a, in a secure way, but it's still it's not a good test because Every computer I have has um, Windows, at least Windows 10 activated on it. So even if I didn't use your account and logged in with a local account, I know it would work. So it's, it's not a good test. Okay, you're just kidding. Oh, what are those emojis? They're so tiny. Crying laughing, okay, I gotcha. Alright, restarting. Damn, that's in there. NZXT. <laughs> your, your front USBs are way too tight, man. The checking media, it, it by default, it's trying to boot to a um, an Ethernet um, connection, which I guess we can go into the BIOS and change that. But if you just leave it alone, it, it finally figures out where Windows is and, and boots. Mm. Well, you can trust us in chat, right? Everyone who uh, who's watching right now and everyone in the future, I mean, they would be okay to put your user account and password in the chat. No one do that. It's not okay. Did it reboot? I think it might have rebooted.
pull back to just a moment. There we go. Yeah, I think that, that solid state drive is just having problems. I probably ought to just recycle it. It's not worth keeping. All right, United States. U.S. keyboard. And skip second keyboard. Don't have internet. And continue with limited setup. So if, if you tell it, if you give it an internet connection there, it will um, it will just go right in. Um, hang on a second, y'all. Checking something on the phone. Okay, we're gonna put Daniel here. No password. Okay, and I turn off everything except for diagnostic data and location. Except and not now to Cortana. Okay, so now I can give it an internet connection. If I can feel it. The back of the computer is kind of up against the wall at this point. That's Wi-Fi. Where is Ethernet? Huh. Okay. I'm going to have to move the computer out a little bit. That's big. That's big boy. There it is. Oh, I didn't feel that. Should have internet now. <sighs> oh, and my phone is almost dead. And the phone is the camera. Yeah, it was down to eight percent. Cool. Okay, so it's uh, it picked up the armory crate. I'm going to say yes to having it do that, and we'll do get started on Edge so we can go get Chrome. Complete setup. Continue without signing in. And we're there. Uh, time and date is correct. And we'll go to ninite.com. Ninite, if you haven't seen this before, is a free website. You can come and check any of the free programs. And we're getting Chrome. Anything you see here you can check and it'll download and install for you. So if you haven't seen ninite.com, go check it out. You do get your Ninite. Click to run it and say yes to making changes and it will Go get the program so you choose and install them. The screen's blanking out because it's it's picking up um, drivers, most likely for the graphics card. But the chipset can do that too if it picks up something chipset related. All right, Armory Crate will probably take a little while. The Armory Crates though um, is is great. Um, just about all modern Asus motherboards come. Um, where it'll do this automatically. It'll go and um, you have to do a couple of clicks, but it goes in and downloads um, all the latest drivers for like the chipset or anything that comes on the motherboard networking, sound, and you know, all that stuff. It'll also let you download the BIOS pretty easily without having to go to the website. All right, so Chrome got installed. Okay, we will close Edge and unpin it. Run Chrome and pin it. Right clicking on it in pin makes it stay there. So if we close it, it's still there. Open it back up again. Set as default. Change the default from Edge to Chrome. Say switch anyway. And that is our new default. Now let's go ahead and get um, HWinfo64 download. And this will tell us the, the temperatures of things, along with uh, the speeds and megahertz and uh, voltage as far as like power goes to uh, different components. 
Uh, also, we will get fur mark from Geeks 3D. Download and Prime 95 download from this website. So show in folder, and we will extract hardware info. Run it. Yes, make changes. Sensors only. Start. And there we go. So lots of information. So there's the CPU current currently at 52 degrees Celsius, 59, 56. And that'll go, that'll jump around quite a bit. If you scroll down, it also shows like motherboard temperatures. And if you go to further enough, far enough, it'll show you drive temperatures. And then finally like GPU temperature, 47. And it's not really doing anything at the moment. Okay. So we're doing this for stress testing for one thing. And the other thing is to tell what the uh, differences in temperatures are with and without the front um, front piece on the case. Because right now the front of this case is mostly blocking those three front fans. Okay, so fur mark, and we'll launch it. I'm not gonna run it yet. Uh, what happened to our copy of Prime 95? Oh wow, it's taking a really long time to download. That's odd. Let's click that again and see if we can get it to go faster. <laughs> the second one just picked up where the first one left off. Huh. I, I have not seen their downloads take that long before. Well, I guess we can go get Cinebench. That's another... Um, CPU stressor. So Crit Heal says I use Opera. It has a free VPN as well. I heard about that. Back in the day, I used Opera. I think I switched from Opera to Chrome because Opera started having like weird stability issues. But I haven't gone back to check it out. But I heard about the VPN that's built in. That's cool. All right. Uh, okay, the Armory Crate got done. Have to agree to its stuff. Skip the wallpaper, skip the user login, and tools on the left. Okay, so these are the drivers it wants to install. I'm going to switch over to utilities and uncheck these. So we don't need all that extra software. Back to drivers and download and install. And after we get the drivers, we'll, go, we'll switch over to the, uh, the BIOS section and see about getting the latest BIOS. So right-clicking on Start, you can go to Device Manager and see what's there. So the only other device right now is PCI Encryption, um, and that should be fixed by a, a driver update or, or a, um, a BIOS update for the uh, the chipset probably. Uh, display adapters. So it says it's a GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, let's go get the latest version from uh, NVIDIA though. So NVIDIA, NVIDIA drivers. Yeah, download. All right, product type, GeForce, product series 10, 1080Ti, search, download, and download. Well, eventually the Prime 95 will get done. They must be having problems with their servers. Okay, so it'll probably take a little while for the Armory Crate to get done. But let's go ahead and run the, the GeForce drivers. They should be able to run at the same time.
All right, just do the driver install it. I'm not going to do the GeForce experience because it'll make me log in and you know I don't have their password for online accounts. Uh, perform a clean install when you do custom is, is usually a good idea because it clears out any previous settings. Helps to keep things cleaner. But you know if, if you're if you if you go into like GeForce um, the GeForce drivers and like custom change things for certain games or something. If you know that, don't do a clean install unless you're ready to go back and redo all those custom changes. Because that stuff gets wiped out. So I think what we're going to do is um, I'll take some notes basically on, you know, the temperatures. Probably start with, um, so say idle with front on. Do another set of temperatures for load, like everything loaded up, you know, CPU being used, GPU being used with front on. And then do the same thing, idle with front off, load with front off, and we can see the, um, the differences. Okay, so close. Did Prime 95 get done? Yes, good, it did. So we can extract that out. Okay. And that uh, that PCI encryption device and other devices is not there anymore, so it got loaded. Most likely by um, uh, the armory crate here. Okay, so right-clicking on Start, Task Manager. More details and performance. So right now the CPU is doing stuff. So it's it's not a true idle temperature. Um, we'll need to wait until after the armory crate gets done, and that will be a, a good idle temperature. Then we'll put it under load. Write those numbers down for both the CPU and the GPU. And then we'll try the same thing again um, without the front cover on and see what the difference is, if any. It may only be a couple of degrees, I mean, for all I know. The, there is an intake right here um, on the right side of the case, and that may be enough, although I doubt it. And this is not Steve at Gamers Nexus level testing. I mean, th those guys actually do it pretty much right. They they account for room temperature in their in their data, um, and they do you know they, they they do like multiple runs to make sure like there's not some out uh, outlying um, result. This is going to be super basic. But I noticed Linus um, is uh, he he's been doing a lot of videos about his new testing lab, and looks like good stuff coming from uh, Linus Tech Tips pretty soon. Well, there already there already is good stuff coming from Linus Tech Tips, but you know, getting into the the testing. Well, so not it's not that basic. I guess not. Yeah. 
I could just go with my feelings. <laughs> Stretch out with your feelings. Uh, well, the CPU um, percentages have dropped quite a bit. Okay, so that got done, and let me see. Should we go ahead and let's restart now? Actually, no. Let's finish later. Let's let's do the BIOS update while we're at it. it. Says no new BIOS, really? Okay. Well, he already updated the BIOS. We don't have to worry about that. But let's reboot and let's turn on the the memory overclocking. Restarting. So we're going to enable DOCP. And what that does is it, um, the RAM right now, I think is running at 2133 megahertz. It's going to overclock it to 3200 megahertz, which is, if I remember right, what the RAM in here is capable of. All right, hit and delete. A couple times a second on the keyboard. I know we can also we can also set the the boot um, options so it doesn't try to boot from a, a network server every single time. Okay, we're in. Let's turn on DOCP. Uh, performance is usually best when memory clock is sync is maximum. Uh, Okay. Cool. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, so 3200 megahertz at 16 timings, 1.35 volts on the RAM. Uh, let's see. Advanced mode and boot. Boot option. We're going to change it to the Western Digital. So we can do F12. It shows the changes we made, although it doesn't change the, the boot option. The, the boot option isn't, isn't there. I wonder why. Let's see if it happens. So if we get the thing about it um, trying to connect to an Ethernet means it didn't save. I think it saved, though. It just didn't include it in the list of changes. We're going to find out. Yeah, it saved the boot option. It just didn't list it in the list of changes. Okay. And I'm, I'm curious about the activation before we go any further. Start settings. Windows isn't activated. So I'm thinking probably he didn't have Windows 10 home before he probably had Windows 10 Pro and if we install Windows 10 Pro it would probably pick up but I still need to talk to him about um, where his copy of Windows was installed because it definitely went on that hard drive um, okay well anyway uh, okay so right clicking task manager performance so we need to let it kind of settle down and then we'll take our idle temperatures but Documents, downloads, hardware info, start. Okay, so it's at 51 degrees C at the moment. But the percentage is still a little high. Let's let it settle down. Then we'll take our temperatures for both the uh, the idle processor and idle uh, GPU temperatures. Okay, so it you can see the graph there. It's pretty much flat at zero or one percent. So CPU. 
50, 47, 44, 41, 48. So it's jumping around quite a bit. Most likely it's just the, um, the variance uh, as the, the water gets pumped through and how fast the fans are spinning. Let's see if we can come up with a little baseline number. Somewhere in the middle, 53, 50, 47, 44, 41, back up to 47, 44, mm, 38, 45. <laughs> it's all over the place. Six, forty-three, back up to forty-seven. I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle there, and we're gonna say idle on the CPU. CPU and GPU. Idle on the CPU. We're gonna say forty-five. All right. Let's go look at the the GPU. Sitting at 46 46.4, 46.3, 46.2, 46.1, 46. Damn, okay, it's just dropping. There is an average number over there. Maybe we should go with the average number. That's probably over a long period of time. Uh, looks like 45 then. It's still dropping. Oh, it went up a little bit. 44.8. 49, 48. And it just keeps dropping. I'm just going to put down 44. It's pretty close. So 44 idle with front off. All right, let's put it under load and see what happens. All right, starting up Prime 95. And also for Mark. More info run anyway. Just stress test, and I pretty much always do blend. So that will put the CPU under max stress, and this will put the GPU under max stress. So rendering the furry donut, finding prime numbers with prime 95, and Here we go. So I don't know if y'all can hear about that, but the, the fans are picking up speed.
Okay, so so far the CPU is up to 60 to 66 degrees Celsius. And it's liable to keep climbing. Although maybe not, it, it may spin up the, uh, the fans faster to keep it at a lower level. They are getting louder. But doing this, we're not testing the, uh, the noise. So it may turn out that the, um, the temperatures don't really go down very much if we take the front cover off but the noise level does because the extra cool air coming in from the front with the cover off would make it so that the fans don't have to run as fast and would therefore be quieter. It's complicated. Ooh, went up to 75 for a second there. temperature is up to 70.9 and the fans keep getting louder Another thing that, that can be tested or kept track of is how long it takes for the, um, for the temperature to go up. Which we're not doing. I suppose you could watch the video back and see it, but we're not going to keep track of it on paper. Pretty sure the fans are louder than they were before. Crit Heel says my laptop's my laptop came with stock temps 95C for the for the CPU and 80 82C for GPU when I bought it five years ago. Yeah, um, on laptops that's definitely a thing. Um, they run that at at such a you know a high temperature. They're they're trying to keep cost down. They're trying to keep thickness down. They keep weight down. So they, they tend to, um, yeah, under stress, yeah, exactly. They, they tend to let things go a lot hotter than they should. In the, um, the under stress thing is, is a different, is another thing. Um, the amount of stress that we're putting on the CPU and the GPU right now is completely unnatural. Um, almost no other program that you would actually use to do something does this uh, amount of uh, stress. It's like worst case scenario. So just when you're like playing games, running your programs, things like that, it's not going to get this bad. Just something to keep uh, keep in mind. So the CPU temperature has dropped. It was in the 70s. Now it's at 69.3, and the fans are running faster. I can hear them more. I'm not sure if y'all could hear it or not. But 69.3 seems fairly steady. So that's load front on, 
on the CPU 69.3. Let's go look at the GPU. GPU is 71.6. It maxed out at 72.4. Let's see what happens. 71.3, 71.8. Seventy-two, and then it dropped down to seventy-one, probably because the fan spun up a little bit. Seventy-two point one. Two point two. Seventy-two point one. There's seventy-two point four. Seventy-two point two. That's max again. And it's dropping down, probably because the fan on the GPU spun up. Okay, so let's say 70. That's pretty close. So 70 degrees on the CPU under load with the, the front on. Uh, So I suppose let's let's stop the stress tests, let it come back to a, an idle temperature, and then we'll do the same thing again with the uh, the front off, and see what happens. Okay, so closing for a mark, or not closed, but stopped, and we will stop Prime ninety five. Yeah, let's go ahead and shut down for a mark. Okay, so now we take off the front, which I'm hoping I can just rip the front off here. Let me see. Yep, there it went. So this was on there. I took it off, and there it is uncovered. So before, it really wasn't getting much air from, from the front, with the exception of what this little grate over here is, there on the side. So very, uh, very reduced airflow. Okay, so what's going on with the temps? Yeah, here in Task Manager, you can see the CPU was all, all the way at the top, and GPU um, was way back here, but it was it was doing a bunch of stuff. All right, so CPU is calmed down, GPU is calmed down. And right here it actually shows the GPU temperature, so I guess we don't really have to go look in the uh, hardware info. But we will anyway. So the CPU actually maxed at 90 degrees C, but that was like a, a temporary. Um, temporary spike. CPU, what are you doing? It's got percentages. What are you up to? Oh, of course Windows Update is doing an update. That's not good for testing. Okay, it calmed down a little bit. Maybe it was just checking. Uh, okay, so we're back down to pretty much idle. The idle with the front on was 45 degrees centigrade. Felix, I loved Windows 7. I think everyone did. It was freaking awesome. Forty degrees C. Back up to forty six. There's gonna be some variance here because the, the the fans will be like ramping up a little bit and then ramping down.
it is actually going down in the 30s, which it wasn't before with the front on. Yeah, so that's something else you have to account for if you're really doing testing. I think a lot of what uh, a lot of the times what they do is they set the fan to just a, a standard speed that's reasonable and leave it locked there for both the CPU and the GPU, and then that that gives you a little bit better control of um, what changes in the case and other changes you make um, actually do, as opposed to varying fan ramping of speeds. Yeah, so it's going between 39-ish up to 46, and just kind of going back and forth in there. There's 47. I wonder if you can reset the average, because this is this is average from from the beginning. Uh, I don't see an option. Okay, so, but 44, 41, 38, 42. I would say the average just at idle, not particularly doing anything, it looks like it's going to be... We'll say 41. So it's, it's 4 degrees cooler-ish. And that's idle, front, off, and we need load, front, off. Okay, but we also need the GPU temperature, which according to Microsoft over here is 42 degrees C. Let's look and see what hardware info says. Yeah, 42.6. Let's see, 42.6 at idle. So that is 1.4 degrees cooler with the, the front off. All right, let's put it under load. Prime 95. Uh, did I not completely close it? Let's exit it out and go back in. So it asked me the question. There we go, blend. Oh, and we also need mark stress test go uh, got that got that all right let's see what happens CPUs up to 64 degrees C but we have to let it like completely warm up and kind of stabilize Yeah, um, Windows uh, Windows 10, they said, was going to be the last version of Windows, and they just up get, update it going forward. That didn't last very long. And then we got Windows 11, and now they've already come out and said Windows uh, 12 is coming. I think 2023 or 24, I can't remember. About a couple of years. They say Windows 7 will end 2026. I'm pretty sure the support officially ended already, or, or, or are you talking about for like military and people who want to pay for uh, keeping uh, Windows 7 going? I think I think they did for like enterprises and military it extended out to that point. I want to say there's 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 a branch of the military 
some part of the Department of Defense is still using Windows XP, and they're paying Microsoft to do security updates for it. CPU spiked up to 75. Sitting around 73. Hmm. That's actually higher temperature than with the front on. But the fan isn't as loud. Looks like it's kind of stabilizing around 72, 73 ish, and then it dropped down to 71. Okay, so it's back to 70 ish. Ah, it went down to 69. I think I might hear the fan a little bit more. 68, 67. Okay. Yeah, I think the fan spun up a little bit and it's dragging the temperature down. So it's it's coming out it's coming out um, lower temperature and the fan not as noisy. Or fans, not as noisy. There's there's a bunch of fans in there. Yeah, it's under 66. It's been at 65 for a bit. 65.1, 65.3. We're going to call that 65.3. So it's, um, 65.3. It's 40 degrees cooler than with the front on under load, and the fan isn't as noisy. And the GPU temperature, uh, let's see, 70.9, 70.1. We're going to call that 71. 71. Okay. So that is one degree more than with the front on, but I'm be willing to bet that the fans aren't running as fast. It's difficult to tell the difference between the noise, between the CPU um, fans um, in the all in one and the ones at the front here and the GPU um, fan, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the GPU fan is running as fast.
So overall, um, the idle difference on versus off for the CPU was four degrees, for four degrees cooler with it off, and 1.4 degrees on the GPU with it off. And then the load temperature, it is four degrees cooler on the CPU, one degrees, one degree hotter on the GPU, but less noise. So I would say 15 bucks for a, for a mesh front for this thing would be worth it. It doesn't make that big a difference in the temperatures, but the noise is, is uh, considerable, the difference. And I don't know if y'all can hear it. The, the microphone's right by the computer, so you may be able to hear it. If you skip through the video, you can hear the differences. Uh, but I don't know. I would have to be uh, have to try that. I might try that later. Rewatch and and skip through and listen, you know. But yeah, let's let's see if that's true. So um, about the fifteen dollar um, mesh front. So it's a MZ wrong keyboard. Could be a drinking game every time I say wrong keyboard on this stream. MZ MZ. Z, H, T, X, T, H, 7, uh, mesh, front, maybe bring it up, oh, the computer's running slow because I've, I've got the CPU maxed out, okay, let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's stop Prime 95, because it's it's taking up all the all the CPU resources and close down that okay save see uh, yeah so this they sh they they sell a fro a flow version but we we want to look at the H7 and then hopefully look for um, optional accessories, like a mesh front. I don't see it on their website. Let's try just front panel. Hmm. I don't know if it's an option. Someone said earlier, I think on the previous stream, that there was a $15 upgrade you could do. That would help if I actually put H7 instead of M7. <laughs> Kit Guru says the opposite of Elite. Yeah. The I think the Elite version of this case has the same problem, where the, the front is... um is solid and it, it, it makes a difference in the cooling it just straight up does can't recommend huh Yeah, I guess um, you could call um, NZXT and ask if they if they do sell one. Um, otherwise, to switch out to the flow version of this case, we'd have to redo everything I just did. Let's see. Oh yeah, I, um, gravity bong. Uh, you you probably um, yeah. I I think I said probably three degrees. Um, what's the difference between one of the yeah three degrees between uh, CPU uh, idle? No, that's not what wasn't CPU idle. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, it's I mean it's a nice computer even with the front on. It's it's not likely to be that big of a difference when he's actually like doing the things he's going to do with it. Um, 
the temperatures are real close. It's just the noise coming out of it. Um, so he could do this test uh, for him, you know, just rip the front off and uh, see what he thinks about it as far as noise goes. And if it's worth the $15, and $15 is really an option to get a mesh front that you just pop on, he can do that. But yeah, um, I'm still waiting for his one terabyte uh, solid state drive coming tomorrow morning, and I'll probably do that. I don't know if I'll stream that. That's just a installed Windows. And basically do what I, I just did on the, um, the two and a half inch solid state drive, the Western Digital. Just be redoing that. Although I, I still need to ask him about where his current copy of Windows is, because it's not on that two terabyte drive. There, there's nothing on there except for a, a recovery partition, which. Mm, Gravity Bong, like the front of my Corsair 4000D, works great for me. 4000D is awesome. Uh, the build I did yesterday or the day before was of the 4000D, and I did another one a couple of weeks, maybe a month. I don't remember exactly with a 4000D. Those are fantastic cases. Um, mesh front, nice, uh, nice interior. Everything works. It's uh, yeah, 4000D, and 4000D is actually cheaper than this thing. This thing's like a 130 for the um, the 4000D from Corsair is the manufacturer. I think you can get it for 90 bucks. I mean, it's it's really good. Highly recommend it. I wonder if y'all can even hear the computer right now. It's it's super quiet. And the microphone is like an inch away from the uh, from the top of the case. Closer than I am. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the cable management also is very good. The cable management on here is good too. This is an okay case as long as it has the the, the, the flow version with the, the great front. Great. Um, it is great, but it's a Mesh, mesh front, not great. Or you can just leave it like this with the case off. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Oh, I oh, can't see that. I think my phone turned off. Wake up, phone. There it goes. Yeah, so it's just kind of a, an indentation. But hey, you can see the fans. And the inside of this thing is beautiful. Let's see. I think it's focusing on the glass, but yeah. Three fans along the top. The, uh, the plate over the CPU is lit up. Same there. And to control the control the um, the lighting, it needs the IQ software. I guess we can get that. Why not? That way he can control his lighting, and we can have fun with it too. All right, Chrome, and download IQ software. Probably ought to get it. I spelled download wrong, but Google will fix it for me. There you go. Corsair Downloads, IQ Software. I don't want to submit my information. Thank you. Oh, wow. 984 megabytes for RGB software. Maybe it does other things. Probably not. Let's see. I thought it was for you. No, this is not my computer. This is the client's computer. Um, I guess um, you, I, I, did, I probably didn't say it after after you joined Crit. It's um yes, make changes. Uh, it's a it's a system that um, it was in a, a very old large um, Cooler Master um, high airflow case, um, and he uh, he bought the uh, the new case here and wanted me to move everything over. Um, so the uh, the motherboard, CPU, RAM, hard drive, and power supply, and graphics card all, all came from the old computer. The things we added were extra fans, the new cooler, 
and uh, of course the case. All right, English, American, American variety of English. What in the hell is that? Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do all that next. I'll, I obviously consent. Uh, I don't want to be contacted by email. I, so Gravity Bonk says, I set my rad as push-pull configuration so the front had to come off for the fans. And push-pull, push, push pull, what that means is um, on a radiator like this, um, a water-cooled system. Actually, you can do it with uh, with regular um, standard uh, heat sink as well. You have a front on you have a fan on the, both the, uh, the front and back of the uh, of the radiator, so it gets um, the front fan pushes through the radiator and the back fan pulls that air through. It just gives you more velocity, and it can make a difference. How much difference it really depends, but. Congratulations, installation successful in the strangest font I've ever seen. Uh, is the camera out of focus? Oh, come on. Yeah, I think the camera is a little bit out of focus. Okay. Uh, oh, it changed. Uh, it changed the lighting um, just automatically. Changed some of it. It's different, but it's still like a rainbow. Let's see what we got here. Rainbow wave. Oh, IQ is not responding. <laughs> Can we click rainbow wave? Okay, so this is rainbow wave. So very rainbowy, but different from before. Let's see what rain does. Kind of blinky. And I'm pretty sure there's a way you can go in and like control each fan individually. So, but we're just doing some basic stuff. What does visor do? Not a whole lot. Kind of blinky and spinny, but different. But yeah, I mean, you can come in here and you can uh, you can download more scenes. Like you hit this plus here, and we can get type lighting. I wonder if it monitors your typing and changes the uh, the lights, that'd be cool. Uh, color wave. What does color wave do? Create. Okay, so it kind of does a little, like a little wave thing. Okay, but yeah, he can mess around with that. Ooh, there's firmware available. For the RAM and the case, huh? I firmware for the case. I guess maybe the um, the fan controller, the RGB fan controller, has firmware. Yeah, you do that update. <laughs> uh, quit the application. Uh, don't disconnect. Yeah. Okay. Got it and don't change nothing for a little bit. It is updated. Oh, it spun the fans up. They definitely got louder. Okay, now they're quieting down. Okay, well let's do the update for the RAM firmware. Got it. Yeah, don't disconnect your RAM while this is happening, right? <sighs> Continuous autofocus. Okay, so that got done. Ah, okay, so you can click on the Asus motherboard, you can click on the 
cooler, and there's all, all the fans, so you can individually control the fans, too. And then there's the RAM. All right, nice. Uh, I think I'll end it there. Um, I still needed to talk to the client about where their copy of Windows is. Um, or if they just want me to reinstall Windows 10 Pro from uh, from scratch whenever their solid state drive comes in. Uh, do you recommend to overclock RAM speed? You should always turn on the, the DOCP or XMP profile so your RAM runs at the speed it's capable of. Um, going beyond that, I don't know that it would be it would be worth it. You can always try it, like especially on um, Ryzen systems. Um, having the RAM um, at 3600 megahertz is preferable to anything slower, including 3200. And it has something to do with the, the speed of the um, Infinity Fabric, like them matching up better. I don't know the exact reason, but apparently it uh, it makes makes a difference. So if you had a 32 um, megahertz kit of RAM running at like 16 degrees, or I'm not saying that 16 degrees, um, 16 um, CL latency, you could try running that at 3600 megahertz at like 18 um, CL and see if that works. Because that would be technically overclocking. It might work, um, but if you have stability problems, you, you'd have to back it off or go in and manually give it more voltage. Um, so typically, to uh, run the RAM at the speed it's rated for, 1.35 volts is uh, is pretty much standard. Versus 1.2 volts if you're running it at the slower speeds, like the 3166 or 3133, whatever it is. So if you um, if you had stability issues, you could then try giving it more voltage, maybe going up to 1.375 uh, or 1.4 volts. Just keep in mind that that will increase the uh, um, you know, the voltage on the RAM, which will make it hotter, could decrease its life, you know. I, I, I wouldn't say it'd be worth it um, to actually increase the voltage, but it would be worth trying if you, like I said, had 3200 MHz RAM, RAM running at 30 um, at 16 CL. Try running it at 3600 3, RAM at CL18 and see if it's stable, because that bump up in megahertz if you have a, uh, a Ryzen system, especially I think beyond Ryzen 3, um, it does make a difference in performance very often. Not always, but a lot. Depending on the games you run or the programs you run, it, it all it's all variable. Well, thank you. That, that means a lot. I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to help or at least show you all the wrong things to do and then me figure out the right thing to do and make mistakes. Nothing wrong with making mistakes with computers. I do it all the time. As long as you fix them, it's all right. Mm, I think I'll put this thing back on rainbow. That was pretty. Dashboard. Go back into the IQ software. Where's the actual home page? I don't want to individually control things. I want all of them together. Oh, great. See, now y'all are seeing me screw up and not be able to find uh, a place in the software. I would think that home would take me there. Oh, there we go. Yes, that's what I needed. And I want Rainbow Wave. Because it's pretty. And we got to represent, right? A friend of mine calls it uh, LGBT lighting. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, y'all. I'm going to 
cut the stream there. Thanks, everybody, for coming and participating. Hope you all learned something. We're, you know, it's entertaining, you know, you're laughing at me making mistakes. But, hey, we got it done, right? It works. Ta-da. Okay. Uh, yeah. You all have good rest of your night. Oh, wow, it's almost 7. How'd that happen? I'm hungry. I think I say I'm hungry at the end of every stream because I'm, I'm usually hungry. Time to go eat. All right. Bye, y'all.